Hey everyone, Doug here with b &H. It's been quite a while since larger sensors and interchangeable lenses became the norm in digital cinema and video production. These days, filmmakers have tons of options, both in form of mirrorless cameras that shoot incredible video, to dedicated cinema and video cameras like we've seen with the Cinema EOS line. What if I told you that there was a camera that combined the best of both worlds? This is the new Canon C70. It's perhaps the best combination of functionality and size, building not only on Canon's latest mirrorless still cameras, but keeping in mind the workhorse build quality and reliability of the Cinema EOS line. Now, just to be clear, this is a video camera, but as you can see, the shape, button layout, grip, and the overall size are clearly inspired by Canon's still cameras. It may look like a traditional still camera, but with things like mini XLR connections, time code over BNC, and a wealth of monitoring tools, the result is a cinema camera that is one of the most portable and versatile cameras in Canon's entire lineup. For people who want the performance of the Cinema EOS line, but love the smaller size of a mirrorless still camera, this could be the perfect camera for you. But let's get straight to the video specs. The C70 is built around a 4K Super 35 CMOS sensor featuring something known as dual gain output, which we'll get to in a moment. It's the first Cinema EOS camera to utilize Canon's RF mount, which has of course been their mirrorless still mount since the EOS R launched, and it records 4K 10-bit 422 video internally to SDXC cards. So I just mentioned something called dual gain output, or DGO on this camera. With DGO, the sensor in the C70 can produce an incredible 16 plus stops of dynamic range, by simultaneously reading the sensor out at two different gain levels, the C70 can combine the exposures to maintain the lower noise levels of a lower gain, along with the higher saturation levels of a higher gain, providing a super rich, high dynamic range image. What's more, this approach actually allows the C70 to have smoother adjustments between ISOs, meaning that the C70 is now the first Cinema EOS camera to feature an auto ISO or auto gain function. This is obviously huge news for videographers, ENG shooters, or anyone shooting something that's in a wildly shifting lighting condition. While we weren't able to record any tests with the one that we have here, the sensor is the same one found in the C300 Mark III, meaning the C70 should have excellent low light performance. Now a key feature of the C70 is the debut of the RF mount on the Cinema EOS system. Naturally, this means full compatibility with Canon's RF lenses, but it actually gets better than that. Canon will also release a special EF to RF focal reducing adapter that can take full frame capable EF glass and shrink it down to the Super 35 sensor's size. This gives you a full frame field of view and an additional stop of light on the lens, while maintaining full EF lens compatibility. Being a first party adapter means that this has the same level of compatibility as Canon's other EF to RF adapters used on the EOS R series. It also ensures that you can swap glass out between existing Cinema EOS bodies that use the EF mount. And yes, believe it or not, the camera also does have in-body image stabilization. When attached to an RF lens, the camera coordinates with the lens for superb image stabilization. And while this level of coordination isn't available for adapted EF glass, optical IS will still work, and the camera does still provide assistance on the X and Y axis along with roll. If there's anything the C70 isn't short of, it's recording options. As far as top end specs are concerned, the C70 can shoot 4K 422 10 bit up to 60 FPS in the traditional H.264 long GOP or interframe mode. In intraframe recording, 4K recording tops out at 30 FPS. However, in the camera's dedicated high frame rate mode, 4K recording can hit 120 FPS still with 422 10-bit color. There's also an HEVC recording mode for lower bitrate storage and H.264 proxy modes that can be recorded simultaneously. Speaking of simultaneous recording though, the C70 can actually do many more combinations than just proxies. Between the two card slots, you can do XFAVC on one card and MP4 on another, 4K on one, on 2K on another, or even 4K progressive on one and 1080i interlaced on another, which means that this can excel in television production that still needs those formats. Lastly, it wouldn't be a Cinema EOS camera without a bevy of color options. Aside from the usual Rec. 709 profiles, including a wide DR variant, there's C-Log 2 and 3 here along with two HDR color profiles. You get the HLG variety in C5, which is backwards compatible with SDR displays, but 
It's nice to see Canon embracing native PQ shooting as well here as option C4, allowing you to really maximize the HDR workflow. Now, unsurprisingly, Canon's dual pixel AF is on board, covering 80% of the area both horizontally and vertically. Dual pixel autofocus performance is super fast and consistent, and the touchscreen allows touch to focus as well. Again, this is one of those features that could be life saving in certain situations, especially events and interviews. Even better though, the C70 inherits the EOS ITR AFX technology from the 1DX Mark III, which improves face recognition through deep learning. Now I covered that technology back when that camera was announced, and I can tell you, the head tracking performance is insane. It should be known by now that a camera is not simply defined by its image quality, but by how reliable it is in the field. Being able to shoot quickly, reach controls easily, and expose your image consistently is perhaps even more important when it comes to a professional tool. The Cinema EOS line in general has always excelled in this regard, and thankfully the C70 brings all of the monitoring and focusing tools we've come to expect from the line. Before we dive into the assist features though, let's look at the Flipout LCD. Now I think this screen is gorgeous. It's clear, sharp, and the colors are overall very accurate. It's actually a big deal here too because there's no EVF on the C70. If you do want external monitoring, you'll need to use the HDMI port. Now while we're over here, you can see that the physical controls allow you to quickly turn on peaking, zebras, and waveform monitoring, which thankfully takes up a very small portion of the screen. Going through the menus, you can see that they're very nicely laid out with clean, horizontal hierarchy that lets you get to everything pretty easily. There's more assist functions to be found here, including focus guides, false color, grids, aspect ratio guides, and yes, even anamorphic preview and de-squeeze functions. The body is perhaps where the hybridization of the C70 is most obvious. Looking from the front, it looks like a large still camera. From the back, it still kind of looks like a large still camera, but look at the sides and you'll see basically every key advantage of a dedicated Cinema EOS camera. Starting from the front though, we have the RF lens mount. Custom function buttons, of which there are 13 total, tally lights, and the record button can be seen from the front. But on the far edge of the grip, you'll notice the dual SD card slots positioned at a slight angle, with the timecode BNC connection right below it. On the back side, we have many more function buttons, and of course, the exposure and menu controls, which are all very accessible. You'll notice a joystick for operation and focus point adjustment along with two exposure dials. My personal favorite, the focus magnification, is located exactly where you'd expect, and indeed, the overall grip and button layout of the C70 is very much in line with the Cinema EOS series in general. Now, right next to all of this is the battery slot and flip-out LCD, which as you can see, protrudes a bit from the back. This extra space doesn't go to waste though, because behind the LCD are audio level controls, and of course, the depth of the battery slot allows you to use BPA-30 or longer lasting BPA-60 batteries. Moving to the left side, things get interesting. First up are the two mini XLR ports, which provide professional audio in a smaller size, no handle or attachments required here. Below that is a standard 3.5 millimeter mic input, a headphone jack, USB-C port, remote input, and a full-size HDMI port. All the monitoring options that we discussed before are accessed from the left side, and you'll be thrilled to hear that despite the small size, Canon somehow did manage to cram a four-stage ND filter inside the unit, which can be accessed here as well. Now, while most of the right side is occupied by the strap, if you remove it, you'll find a quarter 20 tripod thread allowing you to mount the camera vertically for social media video content, of course. It should be mentioned that the C70 also comes with a top handle, BPA-30 battery, and a charger that doubles as DC power. The Canon C70 is fascinating because, in my opinion at least, it's kind of what we always imagined the fusion of Canon DSLRs and Cinema EOS could be. The end result is a beautiful piece of gear that is a fantastic option for cinema and video shooters alike. Those who want to step up from a C100 or need a secondary camera to their C300 Mark III will find the C70 to be a perfect fit. So that's it for the Canon C70. I'm Doug with BNH, and I'll see you next time.